Thank you, Lord. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepared the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, 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 goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, Lord. I pray to you, Psalms 23rd, the Lord have a blessing from the hearers and the doers of this day. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer, please. Lord, we come to you this morning as humbly as we know how, Lord. Lord, we come to you this morning, Lord, giving thanks, Lord. Thanks for this day, Lord, the day that you have made, Lord. And we will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. And Lord, we continue to give you thanks, Lord. Lord, if we had 10,000 pounds, Lord, we would not have enough to thank you for all the blessings that you've given us, Lord. But, Lord, one of the truly blessings that you've given us, Lord, is your love, Lord. The love that you've shown us, Lord, through the birth and the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And, Lord, you loved us that much, Lord. But, Lord, you ask that we love each other, Lord. Show the love that you've shown to us, Lord, through the sacrifice of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord. And, Lord, we come to you this morning, Lord, giving you thanks for just all those things. Because you're truly been a blessing to us, Lord. Sometimes I ask myself and pinch myself, Lord, because you've been better to myself, Lord. Better to me than I've been to myself, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you come touch us with your Holy Spirit this morning, Lord. Guide us, Lord. Touch us with your presence this morning in the song that we're going to sing, Lord. Touch us in the word that's going to be preached today, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Let that word, that song, ask someone, must, what must I do to be saved, Lord? Yes, Lord. Lord, we ask that we yep. will continue to give you, will continue to give us strength, Lord, to build your kingdom, Lord. Look down upon those in this congregation, Lord. Look down upon those that are sick and shut in, Lord. Continue to touch them with a help. They let them touch the help of your God, Lord. For scripture says, Lord, the help of your God has more healing power than any physician, any medicine, Lord. The Lord, look down upon those who have lost loved ones for recently, Lord. Continue to restore that joy that only you can give them, Lord. The Lord, look down upon each and every member of this congregation, Lord. Continue to bless them, Lord. Continue to guide them, Lord. Lord, we can't travel this journey by ourselves, Lord. We need you every step of the way, Lord. Lord, when we stumble and fall, Lord, lift us up, Lord. Give us strength, Lord, to continue this journey, Lord. And Lord, bless every church, this church, and every church that has opened their doors in your Son's name, Jesus. This is all the blessing I ask in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
there is no other way. There is no other way. You know, they were saying, as they were saying, I have tried over and over. We could have said a thousand of those. So God, we need you. 
We need you more, God. Help us to receive all that you've given, God. You are enough. Come on and say that in your spirit, saints. God is enough. Yes, Lord, God. He's enough. Yes, he is. Jesus did it, and he's enough. Thank you, and so Lord. on today, God, we celebrate with you, God, in this sacrament. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. And he took the cup. Hold up your cups. And gave thanks and said, take this, divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Oh, yeah. Let us drink together.
Don't forget to volunteer for the Children's Youth, the Children's Youth and Teen Ministry. To volunteer or for additional information, contact Deacon Smith, Sister Karen Smith, or one of the ministry leaders. Registration is ongoing. Sanctuary upgrade. Starting Monday, December the 6th, pews will be removed in two shifts. For, uh, for, specific, for specific instructions, see Deacon Amos and Deacon Jackson. Don't forget to invite saved and unsaved family members and friends to our Sunday morning and Wednesday night worship service. It's still not too late to be all in for the Building Fund Drive campaign and the completion of our second floor education and recreation building. You may give your tithes and envelope under all in or building fund. Everyone is, asked to, everyone is asked to continue supporting our media ministry. For those who desire to be on, a, on our second shut-in list, contact the church office or see and us to get a prayer request for them. Don't forget to include in your prayers our members, relatives, friends, those in bereavement, our servicemen and women, and our leaders in our churches in our country. Upcoming events for December. For all New Bethel members who are currently in good standings, we are asking that you mark your calendars for the annual church conference, December 11 at 10 a.m. For the definition of a good standing, see an office staff member to obtain a copy of the church, and church bylaws. Pastor stocking December 19th at 10 a.m. You can, you can put your love offering in your tithes and love under pastor's anniversary or market pastor stocking. Let's show our love and support for our pastor and first family during the season of giving. Amen. Heaven or hell? Heaven or hell? God freely allows us to choose. Will you choose heaven for Jesus has paid your dues? Or will you let Satan lead you to hell, your eternal life to lose? Will you accept Jesus into your heart to forgive you of your sin and allow his Holy Spirit to guide you from within? Or will Satan lead you down, sin's path into the viper's den? Heaven or hell seems like an easy decision, but perhaps many just don't have the vision to imagine the beauty of heaven or the torment of hell's prison. Don't delay his choosing. Please don't continue to wait. Satan will do everything in his power to make you hesitate. The longer that you, tip, that you do tarry, for many it will be too late. Heaven or hell, you're allowed to choose eternal life or death. Heaven or hell, it seems like there should be no contest. Heaven or hell, where will you go when you take your last breath? Ephesians 3 and 8, real quick. Paul, this is Paul talking. He says, to me, who is less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of all ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Christ Jesus, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Let us never forget the assignment that's on the church. You know, sometimes we can get so, so bogged down in things that we go through and we forget that we were made to declare not just things, not just to people, but to spirits and to heavenly places. You were made to teach some demons some things about Christ. You were made to declare to every high place that is coming down in Jesus' name. That God's people are victorious. That we are the kingdom. That we win every fight because of the power of God that's within us. Don't y'all know that we have the most prestigious seat in the kingdom? We're seated with Christ in heavenly places. So we give glory to the Lamb of God this morning. And if y'all don't mind, maybe standing, lifting your hands, shouting, dancing, whatever you do to honor the Lord who had this morning. Lord, 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 you are, you are worthy to receive all of this glory. You are worthy to receive all of the honor and the praise and the, the glory, Father God. And of his kingdom, that shall never be an end. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
amen, they would, they would wish they had what we have here. So they, can we give another hand clap to our music ministry, our singers and our musicians? Thank you. And you need to pray for them. The first battle in heaven was against the worship team. Ezekiel 28, Isaiah 14 tells you that the, 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 the schism was not between the preachers. Is between the worship team and God. Yes, sir. So you need to pray for our musicians and our singers because all week they're laboring and they don't have a they don't have a Sunday off. There's no breaks for them. Amen. They always have to be on point. So we need to pray for them, their families, their life. Can I get a witness from the church? Yes, sir. Amen. These are our brothers and our sisters in the Lord, and they are presenting their gift unto God, but they are serving the body of Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, so we need to lift them up in prayer. Let's just stretch our hand this way. Father, I ask that you look over the musicians and over our worshipers, God, as they sing. God, saturate them with your anointing. Keep them, God. Touch every area of their life. In the name of Jesus, it is so, and so it is. If you believe God, say amen. amen. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, uh -huh. a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Uh -huh. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, Verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That thou, that which is born of the flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Let me read that again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it lists, where it lists, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whether it goeth. So is every one that is born of the spirit. Just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, time is winding up. Come on, tell somebody else, time is winding up. Tell somebody else, time is winding up. Now give the Lord praise as you sit down. Hallelujah. Won't be before you long. Two hours from now, we'll be singing and dancing. It is a new variant. New variant. Old variant. New flu. Old flu. Yes, sir. Mass mandates, vaccinations, booster shots. Mm -hmm. There is a dualistic philosophy that is being permeated throughout the earth that you can have God how you want to have him. Yes. There is fear running through the country. You're a black man, you're scared because you don't know if you get pulled over when you go home. There is fear of our parents that now when you send your children to school, hallelujah, you don't know if somebody's going to shoot the building up. Yeah. Satan is causing fear on every hand. Rioting. You have white people rioting. You have black people rioting. You have white people going to the Capitol thinking that it's theirs. Yes, I don't know why some of y'all got surprised by that. Y'all do, we do it in church all the time. Yes, yeah, they, they thought that that belonged to them. So because of that, they acted a fool. But now you see, they're going to court. Black people are rioting too. Uh -huh. Never understood how it can happen in our own community, then we tear up our own community. Yes, Still trying to figure this out. Rioting all over the country. There is, the rioting is on the wall. The time is winding up. Yes, sir. To somebody in the audience and even online that'll watch this later, you will say to me, that this has been going on forever, preacher. Matter of fact, you're too young to realize what happened in the 60s with the Watts riots. You're too, too young to know about Emmett Till, and you're right. But the writing is on the wall. The time is winding up. That Jesus the Christ is soon to return. And if we're not right with him, in hell shall we lift up our eyes. This is not a cute message this morning. This is a message to the church that it is either heaven or hell. That Pastor B. Hermeneutic in his 
presentation today that hell was not created for anybody but Satan and his angels. It is in the book of Ezekiel chapter 28 that you find that this battle in heaven begin to rage. The scriptures tell you that Satan thought he was big and bad. He rose against God. The Bible says that he said, I will lift up my kingdom above yours. I would become like you. The Bible says, God said, you done got it messed up, brother. You just don't know who I am. The scriptures say, if I can trapanize it for you. Now he cast him down to the earth. And he made a dwelling place for him. He cast him down to hell or to Shiloh. But his final resting place will be the lake of fire at the final judgment. You do know that when you will die, that you must meet the final judgment. And at that final judgment, he will determine, will he say unto you, well done, or will he say, depart from me? I don't know about you, but I want to hear God say to me, well done. He ain't going to say, I did everything well, but what he going to do say, you did get this one thing right, that you didn't confess me before me, that I was the Lord and Savior. Look at your neighbor's and neighbor, I want to say, well done. Because the reason that he can't say that you did everything well is because he knows good and well that you didn't do everything well. Matter of fact, if you'll be honest with me, you know you ain't done everything well. But one thing that I did get right, one Friday night, it could be a Thursday night for you. I don't know what night it was. I made Jesus the Lord of my life. And from then on, I want to meet him in peace. It was this battle in heaven that cast him down. Yes, yes, you die, hell, Shiloh, the grave, but the final resting place for the unbeliever is the lake of fire. The final resting place for the believer is heaven. The unbeliever, lake of fire, the final, final resting place for the believer is heaven. When you die, you don't go to purgatory. You go to a place called Abraham's bosom for the Hebrews, for us it's called paradise. It is a place where we wait in God until the final judgment. When you get to the final judgment, can I help some of you out? out? God will not give you everything you've done in your body. Why won't he detail to me everything I did? Because my Bible tells me that he remembers my sins no more. So then how can he bring him back up to me when I see him if he remembers them no more? So when I see him, it's not to tell me what I did, it's to tell me where I'm going. Y'all miss your place to shout. See, you think that when you get to the judgment seat, God gonna bring up all your bad sin. But he can't because Micah chapter 7 says he threw them into the depths of the sea and he can't remember them. So when you get before God, he ain't bring up the old stuff. He gonna say, let me tell you about the stuff I got for you. When you made me Lord and Savior of your life, I got some things prepared for you. Let's go to the gospel of John. He ain't gonna bring up your own stuff. He don't remember it. He threw it into the depths of the sea. I'm not telling you nothing that ain't in the Bible. I'm just coming against what you've always been taught. Because they told me he gonna read everything I did. 1983, 1990. How can you remember that if I repent it? Help me, and then I'll say I owned it. I was wrong. But my Bible says he remembers. In the book, or did I make it up? So it's not about what I did, it's about where I'm going. Somebody got free today. You ain't got to clap, but somebody got free. You're like, that does make sense. That's how we got me, sir. So it is this, this fear, this variance, this, this. Uh, I'm vaccinated against vaccinated. It's, it's this black against white. It's this traditionalism against this new age. It's all of this fighting. Yeah. And Satan is saying we're forgetting the main thing. That we got to be born again. Yes, sir. That salvation is the only means by which you will go to heaven. Uh -huh. And that, that, that just because someone... I believe in this Jehovah Witness who believe that there is no hell. That's what they say. That, they, that they've made up this doctrine that how can this loving God yeah. create a place Black for people? And consequently, they have it partly right, which is all the way wrong. Right. That, that he did not create it for you and I. Right. We choose hell right. when we reject Jesus. Yeah. So it was never, it was created.
ready for Satan and his third of the angels that followed him and his job is Satan's job is to deceive you this whole time to make you choose hell because he'll tell you I ain't real now that I ain't real you can live like surely God wouldn't sin it's kind of like what I told you a couple of Sundays ago when I thought my mama had some heart surely you wouldn't whip a kid when they sleep you would at least wake them up let them stretch and then commit to the beating. Surely you wouldn't whoop them while I'm asleep. Wait, not, not you. You Holy Ghost feel. You speak in tongues. You have a license. What are you doing whooping people while they sleep? See, that's, that, that, that's, the, the, that's, the, that's the thought process. And when I clearly find out, she don't care if you sleep, sick, broken arm, you're getting all this work today. Because you need it. You need it. See, you was cut up in school. You want to sleep in school. See, you was cut. You needed this book. Satan's job is to make you like he ain't real. And then, here comes these, all these dualistic philosophies. Dualistic means one foot of God, one foot of you. Dualistic. Meaning that I can take, I, I'm not religious. Watch this. I'm spiritual. I take a little bit of all the religions and I mix them up. Because you know, don't, don't, can't no man just tell me Jesus is the only way. Well, then tell me why he's not. Because if every, let Pastor be apologetic, if every religion gives him a nod, something good got to be about it. Everybody says the same thing about him, so there got to be some truth to what he's saying. And if every religion is taking this holy script and trying to rearrange it, it's got to be some good in it. What they're trying to get us to see is that they want you to know, they want you to believe that Satan's not real. Yes. He, he doesn't exist. He does exist. Yes. He is a deceiver of nations. Yes, sir. He is an enemy to the believer. Uh -huh. And he is the reason why we have so many divisions. Watch this. And, and, and you, yes, the devil probably made you do it, but you had to yield yourself to him. Yes. Uh, listen, I know, I probably said it, and if I've said it, I may come back a year from now and repeat, you know, maybe fix this part when I'm getting ready to say it. But, but Satan is behind everything negative. Yes, sir. And God is behind everything positive. Yes, sir. That's why Satan can't bless too. He can't bless. It is an oxymoron. It's like a good, good witch of the West. Ain't no such thing as a good witch. I heard some of y'all feeling in there. Yeah, because the witch told you that there was one. Ain't no good witch. A witch can be nothing but evil. Because a witch's powers come from evil source. So if the source is bad, the fruit don't be bad. I don't care if you put good on the front of it. <laughs> He's trying to get you to believe it's some of you, some of him. And so, so, so you can just mix all of these things in together and you'll be fine. And then, and then we'll sort it out at the end. No, we got to sort it out now. Because now faith is. Now, now is the day of salvation. I can't wait to act like there is no hell. Watch this. And then get to the end. Find out there is one and be like, well, can I go back? You remember the story that Jesus gave about Lazarus begging at the gate? Yes, sir. And the Bible says that this beggar, Lazarus, not the one he raised from the dead. There's another brother named Lazarus. Yeah. The dogs were looking at his sores. And the Bible says that rich man went around him and when he, they both died. The rich man went to hell, Shiloh, and Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom. While he was in hell, he said, Lord, if that Lazarus just come, dip his finger in some water and let him bring it to me. Jesus said, No, you can't get that. Then he said, Well, let me at least go back and tell my brothers that they don't want to come here. Jesus says, No, they got the law and the prophets. Let them hear them. In other words, there is a distinction. Rich man waited till the end to find out. Waited till the end. There is a hell. Yeah. But the, the, the part of that scripture I want you to get, 
is that there is a heaven. Yeah. Yeah. There is a place for all of God's children yeah. that have believed on him. Yeah. That have served him. Yeah. There is a place for you. Yeah. You won't be a no man walking around. You got a place you can call home. The word mansion is not how you think about 18 bedrooms. The word mansion literally means a place in God. Oh yeah. Like, like it's better than what you can imagine. He says, but I got prepared for you. It's better than you can imagine what you mean. That's why the scripture says, I have not seen. See, not, that's not just a faith scripture. We eisegete that. But the exegetical root of that scripture literally means eyes have not seen, nor ear have heard, nor has it entered to your heart. The things that God has prepared when? When you get to heaven. Y'all getting anything this yes, morning? Sir. Well, then, Pastor, help me then understand why this is important to me because I'm saved. Oh, my. I've given my life to the Lord Jesus and, and I come to church and, and I give. And it, it help, you have to help me out because I need to understand why this sermon is important. It's important for two different reasons because what we're getting ready to read in the text is that we see an apologetic John and we see an evangelistic John. The apologetic John starts in John chapter 1, and here's what he says very clearly. No, no beating around the bush. He says it very clearly. In the beginning was the Word. The and the Word was with God. Watch this. And the Word was God. Now, lowercase g, uppercase g, let you know that he is a deity. And then he skips down to verse 14. He says, that word became flesh, and that word dwelt among us. John says, I ain't got no time to be talking about who began who, who began all that. I'm just going to come for the jugular and let you know Jesus is God. Yes, John said, that ain't my, I'm not better than Matthew. I'm not better than Mark. I'm not more skilled than Luke, but I got a different job. And here's my job. Jesus is God. Oh, yeah. Remember I told you this big $7 word. Hear what it means. Hypostatic union. It means that Jesus, only Jesus, is 100% God and 100% man. The only way that he could redeem us is that he had to be divine because a man couldn't go through what he went through and still die. Oh, my. Okay, let me help some of y'all out. Y'all get mad when people look at you funny. And stop. You won't work in ministry. You won't even come to church for a couple of weeks to show them how mad you are. And you don't really know. They don't really care. But you act like you're real mad. Watch this. Jesus had to be divine because not only was he looked at crazy, he was looked all night long. He was lying on. He was marched from judgment all the judge. He had to be divine. Because if it was you and I, Oh, y'all got one more time. <laughs> You're really saying that your one more time is up and now I'm ready. He had to beat the ball. John says, I ain't got time for these games. He is God. Then he, then, then he gives us a narrative in chapter 2. He gives us a narrative. Jesus shows up at this wedding feast. Uh -huh. Had to be with a relative because his mom is there and his disciples are invited. And he does these miracles in front of them. He, 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 he gives them, turns water into wine. But Jesus does something in chapter 2, verses 23 through 25, that I want you to uh, read when you get home. Jesus says something, I'm going to read it out of my text. It says, now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. They believed that he was in Jerusalem. And, and, and they're believing. It, the Bible says many, it's many folk in here today, many people online believed in his name. Uh -huh. not, not in the denomination they're with. They believed in his name. Yes, sir. Not, not, in, not in your title or your education, but they believe in his name. Yeah. See, I tell people I am a Christian that goes to a missionary Baptist church because first of all, I'm saved. And then I've chosen to join myself with those who are on a mission to baptize. But see, some will say, well, I'm Baptist. That's fine. What does that literally mean? It should mean that you've been baptized in him and he is your Lord and Savior. You can't just be Baptist in name and not in deed. I know I'm going to get four amens because now we want to identify with denomination as opposed to who called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. I am a Christian who has joined itself with folks who are on a mission. Any Christians in here today? 
Okay, for all the smart people online and in the audience that may say, well, you know, Christianity is something that Constantine made, and it doesn't really mean what you think it means. No, Christianity means to me, it means Christ-like. I don't care what you say it means or what they thought it means. It means Jesus wasn't a Christian. Exactly right. He died so that we could become like him. Yes, I know he was a Jew. Amen. I know he was raised from the, from the tribe of Judah. I know he was a Jew. Him being a Jew ain't got nothing to do with me being a Christian because he died so I would have a right to the tree of life. And by him dying and by me accepting, I become a Christian or Christ-like. Yes, sir. Take that back to your uncle who try to keep talking to you about stuff at the Thanksgiving dinner. Uh -oh. well, you, you know the black man is the Jew. You gonna do this again? Yeah, I'm a Christian because I follow Jesus. Yeah, I know he wasn't one. It's obvious that he wasn't a Christian. There was no Christians until in Acts chapter 12 when the persecution of the church and the Bible says at Antioch they were called Christians first. Yeah. Why? Because they identified who they were following. Anybody following the Lord? Yes. Yes. So the pastor, he says many believed on his name. But Jesus, look at verse 24, but Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men and needed not that any should testify him. Watch this, verse 25, read it when you get home, for he knew what was in man. Mm. Okay, verse 25 of chapter 2 is so key for us today. Y'all still with me? Yeah. It's so key because this thing about being born again is all messed up. And the reason I keep talking about it is because what I found out through my research is that a lot of people are not born again. You got preachers who are not born again. You got people singing and playing, ushering, being a deacon, deaconess, not going to heaven. Because what happened is they associated an act, watch this, with faith. I'm going to help you. I'm going to promise that I'm going to help you. Okay, so, 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 so he says he knew. So, so look at verse chapter 3, verse 1. Chapter 1, he, John declares who he is. Chapter 2, we see this God-man in action. Chapter 3 is the apologetics and the evangelistic part of John's gospel. Apologetics, being able to defend the faith. Evangelistic is what all of us should be doing in sharing the gospel. We see firsthand how you share the gospel. Here it is, John 3. Y'all hear it? There was a man of the Pharisees, circle that in your Bible. That means that this brother knows about Jesus. He knows about who God is. He studied. If he's a Pharisee, he's went through school. He's went to vacation Bible school. He know the doctrine. He know all it. He's a Pharisee. Watch this. Not only is he a Pharisee, deacon, watch this. He is a ruler. Ruler. That's different. See, it's something to just be a uh, go to school. It's another thing to be leading folks. Watch this. He he is a ruler of the Jews. When, when we talk about how somebody is welcome into the church, let me show you this real quickly. Here's how we believe someone comes into the church, the ecclesia, the body of believers. Here is what we believe. If you put on that first slide for them so they can see what we, what we deem as somebody coming to church. There's three ways you can come. Number one is salvation. That means that you're confessing the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. What we say, you give the preacher your hand. And you give God your heart. In the old church, they would put a chair in the front. You would come to that chair and you would sit down. And that chair symbolized to everybody in this audience that you coming up here for, for salvation. Okay? There's another thing that we do. It's called rededication. It means that you've been saved at one point in your life. But you have backslid. That means that you went back into the world and you began to make 2 plus 2 equal 5 as opposed to 2 plus 2 equal 4. In other words, you went about to establish your own righteousness. 
I ain't got to go to church on Sunday. I ain't go to church. You know, you start doing all that stuff. You start making it what you want it to be as opposed to what the Bible is. You have backslid. You have turned from God back to the world. All of us at some point of our life have been in a backslidden state. And some people are still there. Watch this. That's why God says in Jeremiah, I'm married to the backslider. So we talk about rededication. Second way, third way, we say uh, somebody comes in is that uh, they come through church membership. They don't have a church. Let pastors say this again while I'm preaching, not during altar call, that, that home church is a different nomenclature for everybody in here. You all have a home church maybe where you identify where you were baptized, where your family goes or something like that. That's your home church. But if that's not the church you are being fed and pastored at, that is not your home church. The term is, that's where I grew up. Why is this important? Because if you don't get this, you don't get the rest part of my sermon. Because we got to identify that because Brown Street Church of God in Christ is where I grew up. That is not my home church. My home church is New Bethel Missionary Baptist Church. This is where I'm being fed. This is where I worship. This is, watch this. This is where I tithe. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And if you, this is where I tithe. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You hear that, right? Okay, good. Amen. Okay. Yeah, I, I just don't get, I get. That's important because that's how you come into the church. Now, if you've been around a traditional Baptist church, here are four things that you're always going to hear. You can come, this is how it happens, you can come by letter. Now, that's a good thing. We don't do this like we used to, but some people do. I've gotten a couple letters since I've been pastor here. And so what happens is, uh, in, in the church covenant of every missionary Baptist church, there is a term in there that says, if you leave the church you are in, we pray that you will join with another church. And so when you leave one church, how we leave now, we get our marbles and our jacks and we leave. How the old church would do it is that, Pastor, uh, A, B, and C has happened, and I'm upset, and I just don't want to be here, so I want to leave. And so when the letter writes, when the pastor writes a letter to the next pastor, he'll say what you told him. They were just mad, they couldn't get over it, so here they come. But the pastor should say, they are a member in good standing. What does that mean? A member in good standing. That means I come to church, I'm active in ministry, and I give money. Amen. I got to say it like that because that means something to different people. I'm talking about traditionally. So when you get a letter, and you know, from another church, that's how we do it. Pastor, this, this member is leaving this church and coming. We don't do that no more. We just recycle members now. We don't care why you left the other church. And somebody should be asking. It's pretty good over there. Why did you leave there? The Lord just led me to a different place. You better be like, okay. See, that letter lets us know that your shepherd has released you. See, here's the problem. We've lost respect for that because we've lost respect for pastors. Yeah. I don't care what my daddy did or somebody tell me about my dad, he's still my dad, I'm gonna respect him. I'm gonna pray for that joke, but I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna know he's living. That letter lets us know that you're leaving right. And sometimes you gotta leave, you may move. You, you, you may, uh, it may be too long of a drive, right? Or, or um, uh, you, your child may go to school and you gotta move, somebody may get sick, so you gotta move. So that letter is the way you come. Number two, the other way you come. We call this candidate for baptism. Candidate for baptism means, watch this, that you are not saved yet, but you wanna accept Jesus as your personal savior, and then as a result of that inward confession, we are gonna put you in that wall. That water doesn't make you saved. That water is to tell everybody in the church that I am saved by now, now, now going underneath the water, his death, but then coming back up, his resurrection. So you come to church be a candidate for baptism. Here's the last one. Here's the last one. Christian experience. Anybody ever heard these terms? Christian experience means that you are saved. 
And either you've gotten saved somewhere, you're coming, or you're leaving another church. So with Christian experience, should come a letter. If you see, I'm trying to help. Yes, sir. Sure. Because see, you hear these terms, and you just looking like, oh, this ain't for me. I'm just getting on my phone. No, now you know what they mean. And when we know better, you do better. That's why I understand how folks just start churches and everybody bless them. And then, well, you know, then somebody comes because they want to, you know, have you underneath them. They want to be a bishop. So they say, well, I'll bless you. Uh -huh. So they out of order. Now you out of order. Now the whole thing out of order. Everything. And you wonder why anybody getting saved. Uh -huh. Yeah, people may come because it's exciting. It's new. People like new stuff. But will it last? Well. Here it is. Here it is. Church letter. Kept from baptism. Christian experience. John chapter 3 shows us a man who's had Christian experience. Yes, sir. He says, there is a man that bears the name Nicodemus, a ruler of Jews. Look at verse, verse uh, uh, 2. He said, the same came to... Did y'all get all that last part? Yes, sir. I, I just feel my spirit. Somebody, I hope somebody got that. Mm -hmm. All right, now listen to this. The same came to Jesus by night. Uh -oh. And he said unto him, Rabbi, here's what we know about you based on what I can see. We know that thou art a teacher so, uh, Nicodemus say, number one, you know the Bible. Yes. So he identifies him as a teacher, but he goes a step further. You are a teacher coming from God. So not only are you like us, where you were trained in school, we believe that you came straight from God. Uh -huh. look, at, look at the second part that Nicodemus says, though. He says, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God. Be. In other words, you differ. You, you, you're different. And, and you're different because not only is your teaching different, but the, the demonstration of the Holy Ghost is different. Yeah. Hear my preach about the Ruach, the wind of God? Yeah. To the, he said, he said it, you're different from us because you don't just come and teach it, but you come and you got demonstration. Nicodemus, a Pharisee, is recognizing the spiritual manner and the spiritual maturity of the Lord Jesus. And he's saying, listen, I ain't ready to call you Jesus yet, or the son of the, but I know you're different. <laughs> because he's still stuck in that religion. Yes. Yeah. That religion will release him to say you are the son of God. But I know something's different about you. Can I, can I help some of you all out today? Point number one, write this down, and, and I'm going to stay here for a second. I told you I got a lot to cover. That church membership is not the same as salvation. Right. Amen. That's good. Yeah, yeah somebody said, what? I, I got hurt. Somebody said, what? Yeah, that literally means that just because you join a new church doesn't mean that you are saved. Amen. They are two different experiences. Yeah. The assumption is that because you join, you are saved. But the question got to be asked, have you been born again? Not to get in your business, but to make sure that we're doing our job as a church and making sure that you know the Lord Jesus. Because our job here is not to look cute, not to get new pews, not to get TVs, but our job here is to lead folks to Jesus. So ask your neighbor, say neighbor. Have you been born again? Yeah, yeah that, that, that's why we do it. Yes. See, because I go is, you ever ask somebody, uh, 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 you know, do, do, are, are you saved? Or I'm gonna get on that in a minute. Are you saved? I believe in God. I don't act. That's not the question. I didn't ask you. So, are you saved? Oh, well, yeah, you know, I go to source. I grew up. You know, I grew up in New Bethlehem. Oh, You're not answering the question. It's kind of like, you know, do you like chicken or rice? Well, you know, collard greens is good. I'm not sure. Two, two. You have two. Chicken or rice. You bring a collard greens. Because for so long, we've equated membership with salvation. And this is not about, remember what I said at the beginning of the sermon, vaccinated against others. It's not about that. It's about, I need everybody to win. I need everybody on my team to win, and how you win is faith in Jesus. Yeah, and because you grew up a place, does not mean that you've been, how do you know that? Look at verse 1 and 2. He's a Pharisee. He's a Jew. He's a ruler of the 
the Jews, and he's yet to say, you are the son of the living God. Because he was raised around it. Mm. But it ain't got it yet. Yeah. 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 I'm praying, I'm praying, and I know, I know, I already know it's going to happen because they have to walk their own journey. I know at some point in my life, my children are going to come to grips with what I've been preaching these last 20 years. It's all they know. They're going to come to grips with it, and they may journey off for a season, but I know they're coming back. You know why? God gave me a promise. Yeah. What did he say? He gave you a promise, too, that when they are old, I don't be tripping. When they be tripping, I ain't tripping. I used to be like, oh, I got a promise, and all your promises are yes and amen, and you never lie. So I'm good. But just because he gave me that promise don't mean I stop preaching. You better be born again. See, because then we say, well, here it is, look at me. Well, if God really wanted them to be saved, he would save them. And so now we become lazy Christians, and we become church folk, and we stop preaching what Jesus was preaching. You got to be born again. Amen. Here it is. He says, church membership, y'all, is not the same. Because here it is, he's a ruler of the Jews, and he's, he don't really understand what he's missing. Look at verse 3. Y'all get anything? Jesus answered and said unto him. Now, now, okay, help me out. You've probably seen this text a thousand times. Don't fall asleep because I'm teaching. I ain't screaming yet. Here it is. Watch this. Why does he say you are a teacher from God? Okay, let's do an exercise real quickly. <clears throat> uh, what's your name? Just somebody scream your name. Everybody scream your name. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, uh, and then if I say to you, uh, my name, the natural response would be if we never met, my name is so and so. Right? But if I just start talking to you about something random that has nothing to do with the first question I ask you, your look is going to be like, where are we going with this? Verse 3 of chapter 3 is connected to verse 25 of chapter 2. If you read chapter 2, verse 25, the Bible says, I read it for you, and he needed not any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. That's chapter 2, verse 25. So chapter 3, verse 3, here's what he says. Nicodemus, you come to me with these flattering words, but here's what you need. <laughs> Y'all missed it. Here it is. He says, you don't need to flatter me. I know who I am. You don't know, even though you've been going to church your whole life, you don't know who I am. But let me tell you what you really need. Look at verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily I, verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen. Verse 3 means nothing to Nicodemus in verse 1 and 2 because he thought Jesus would have been like, Oh yeah, Nicodemus, I am. A teacher sent from God. And Jesus said, you missing it, bro. Right. Yeah, you, you, you trying to flatter me as opposed to serving me. Uh, you trying to get into heaven on good works yeah. as opposed to knowing that you're down and dirty and you just need me. You trying to get to heaven because, God, I came on Sunday. I gave my money. I did all that. did what everything pastor said. But here's what God is saying. I don't need your stuff. I need you. Yeah. Somebody say, Lord, I surrender. Verse 3 don't mean what? Except a man. And, 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 and you know what? Nicodemus had a good point. Look at verse 4. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he's old? Have you ever been to church? Just raise your hand. I don't care who, who, who talk about you. I got your back. Have you ever been to church and heard a certain term and you'd be like, huh? Yes, sir. And then we say stuff that we think you should know, uh -oh. you'd be like, well, oh, yeah, right, hallelujah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you ain't trying to look dumb. Yes, sir. And you don't, you just don't know. Just don't know. It's like in school, when, I, when you didn't know something, you were scared to ask. And don't let a teacher embarrass you. Come on. It's over with. You're going to sit back in that corner like, I can't wait till this period's over. <laughs> and we don't want church to be like that. So Nicodemus had a good point. Look at verse 3. Jesus said, you got to be born again. Nicodemus said, huh? I didn't learn that in Pharisee school. And we don't teach that to the Jews. 
So what you look at verse 4. How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? He like, you talking about being one. In other words, verse 2, I knew he was different. Verse 4, I know how different you was. <laughs> y'all put it together? Yeah. Second thing I got to challenge you with, point two. Second thing, that uh, uh, where your parents went to church is not the same as salvation. Amen. Amen. That, that, that where your parents grew up is not the same as you being saved. Right. My mama, missionary of the church, they tithed, and while I was in their household, thank God for that. But when I became a man and had to run my own household, I couldn't talk to God talking about, hey, well, my mama tithe. What have you done for me lately? Where, where, where our parents went to church? Tell my children, I want you to worship me better, but you may move and go to college. You may go somewhere else. You may not want to worship me. That's fine. You got to worship somewhere because if you don't, hell is real. And can I help somebody out? I, hell is waiting. And so is heaven. You got to make the choice. Well, then why, why got to be only two choices? Because that's how God set it up. Okay, I don't know, and maybe if I do some more study, I can probably have an answer for you later on. But like right now, I don't have an answer. Here's my answer. That's how he set it up. And if that's how he set it up, that's what it is. Like, like, like on Sunday, your family may only have one choice. I know mine does. There's only one thing that we're doing on Sunday. We're coming to church. There's no other, well, maybe this and maybe this. Or no, there's no other choice. I don't care if it's sleeping outside. We going to get online. Amen. So God gave you two. Choose one. And, and what Satan does is, he doesn't make hell look like it really is. Oh, he says, Christianity is not fun. Yeah. Can't drink, can't smoke, can't sex, can't club, can't gamble. See, that's, he taking away all your fun. No. <laughs> can't cheat on your spouse, can't cheat on your taxes. You, you just can't do nothing. <laughs> Don't you just hate it over there? Know you're getting gassed up. And the whole time, he's like, come on, I, I'll show you some fun. And then you walk with him, and you talk with him, and before you know it, the old saints say, don't let the devil ride. Because after he get done riding, he don't want to drive. Come on. Let me ride with you. Then he's like, well, I know a better way. Let me drive. Okay. Then you let Satan drive your life. And then you come here preaching like this, and now there's a conflict because what Satan been telling you and what I'm telling you, now there is a fight. And so this is where the dualism philosophy comes in. I can take what Pastor's saying, I can do my own thing, and I can mix it all up, and I can have Christianity. Y'all get Y'all get Yeah. Look at this. He says, can he enter? No. Listen, where, 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 where they go, where I go, it's good for them now, but they're going to come to a place where they say, Lord, I need you for me. Yeah. Got to stop getting busy during church. I've never seen so many people get so busy when the sermon comes on. Like when I start preaching, somebody need to go clean some up. Somebody need to go park a car. Somebody, I mean, no, I'm listening to the word. Because I've seen grown men fight another grown men when the, when the game's on. Fight their children. Don't talk to me when the game's on. But when the preacher's on, you can say whatever you want, baby. Because we put more emphasis in the things that we want as opposed to the things that we need. Yeah, that's it. Amen. Amen. Help us, Lord. Tell a man, go back into his mother's womb and be born. Look at verse 5. Jesus says and says to him, I'm almost done. Barely I said to thee, except a man, here it is, y'all. Be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, right in verse 5, Jesus enters two things that we haven't seen. Nicodemus is familiar with water baptism at some point because John had been baptized. 
So he's heard about the water part. The spirit part? I ain't heard about this. I didn't say it. Jesus said it. He said, unless you're born. And what he's saying to them, write this down. He said, Nicodemus, unless you be cleansed by the water and of the spirit. Wait a second, hold the press preacher. Wait a minute, you mean to tell me that I gave the preacher my hand, I gave God my heart. I thought I was good. Once saved, always saved. I thought I was cool. I thought I was straight. I don't need to come back to church because I did it when I was seven and I'm good. No. Mm -mm. See, because when, when you get saved, Jesus begins the process of what we call sanctification. So then he gets on the inside of you by the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. And that Holy Spirit does something that we all love and need. It's called conviction. Yes, Lord. Not yes. condemnation. Yes. But it convicts you when you're doing wrong. Yes. And that what makes you realize, wait a minute. This ain't what Christians right. supposed to do. Right, right. So then conviction leads to repentance. Yes. And repentance leads to living a stronger life. And that's why the Bible says a just man may fall seven times, but he gets back up. The get back up is the man, repenting man. part. Anybody repented lately in here? Y'all ain't talking to me. Anybody say, Lord, not, not that I'm sorry, but Lord, forgive me, and I'm turning from my evil ways, and I'm walking. Anybody here repented lately? Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. It says, born except water and the spirit. What he says, y'all, look what he says. You can't enter the kingdom. Wait, 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 wait. God, you gonna keep me out? I went to vacation Bible school. Sing in the choir. I, I serve at the food pantry. I, I taught Sunday school. Many shall say in that day, Lord, Lord, didn't I? He will say to them, depart from me. Watch this. I never. Wait a second. I did all this stuff? And you didn't know me? He said, no, because you didn't really know me. You just did it because you saw everybody else doing it. But what you can miss is that you weren't born again. You didn't confess me as Lord and Savior. And therefore, that's tough. That's tough. But not, not this church. Not this church, because you know why? Look at verse. Look, look at verse six. I want you to write this down. I want, why do I need to be saved? Write this down. Why do I need to be saved and born again? When we use the word "are you saved," we're really saying, "Have you been born again, or have you accepted Jesus?" So that term, "saved," "born again," uh, "accepting Jesus," are all the same term. Right. Are you saved? Doesn't mean do you go to church. It means is Jesus the Lord of your life? That's why when people come up for prayer, we tell you to close your eyes and bow your head for two reasons. Number one, so you're not looking around and making folks nervous. Number two, you really need to have an encounter with God to check your life. And if you're looking around and you're walking up, oh, I said I told you they weren't saved. See, that's the wrong spirit. But that's what we do in church. Because the assumption again is because you show up every week, you say. But it might not be the case. And I'm tired of people, watch this, why did Nicodemus come at night? Because he didn't want to be yeah, number one, he didn't want the other Pharisees knowing what he knew. And then he also had some questions for God that he couldn't ask in front of other people because he was too far. I should know this stuff. But you don't. And that's why Jesus says, you got to be born again. Yeah. Look what he says here in verse 6. He says that which is, the reason we need it, the reason you need to be saved, the reason you need a confession of faith, number one is that's what God prescribed. He says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart, number two, now look at these two things now. Confession with your mouth is for the people around you. What happens in your heart is between you and God. But if they both weren't important, he wouldn't have said it. Just like a marriage, we give our vows in front of the witnesses. But what's going on in the heart of the bride and the groom is between them and God. And that's why he says, what God has joined together, 
Let no man put asunder. So in other words, what happens to the reason that you need to be saved is so that, well, here's your ticket to heaven. When you accept Jesus, watch this. Number one, you punch your ticket to heaven. But now, look at the evangelistic side. You become a witness for him. We miss that part. Because we're caught so much in the fact that I'm going to heaven now. I forget to tell my brother and sister that you need the same thing I got. Y'all got it? That's what he says. He says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. I'm leaving. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Verse 7. Don't marvel that I say you must be born again. Don't, 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 don't get caught up in the uh, uh, words that I'm saying. Understand what I'm preaching to you this morning. I keep using the word born again. That's probably the only thing that you're going to remember. But don't marvel at that. Because he says, just like the wind. The wind blows. You can't see the wind. You can hear it. And you can see the effects of it. He says, it's just like Christianity. He says, I, people tell me they're Christian. But there's no sign of that. And so what I really want our church to realize from our youngest to our oldest is that if we're going to be a church that really represents God, I need, we need everybody born again. We have a job to do for East St. Louis. Our job is not just to feed them, but to help them get born again. Our job is not just to pay their bills, but to tell them if you don't accept Jesus, in hell shall you live. We got to get serious and we got to get real down to earth and roll some folk and say, listen, if you keep going down this road, you will not meet God in peace. But how are you going to meet God in peace? There is a man from Galilee, and if you're in sin, he'll set you free. His name is Jesus. And the only way that you're going to meet God in peace is coming through the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, he says, I am the door. If any man come up any other way, he's a robber and a thief. But I And I'm getting out your way because I took too much of your time. Write it down. The only way to heaven is number one, faith in Jesus and a confession made with your mouth. That's the only way you're going to make it in. And watch this. If you now don't have that, you may need to rededicate. But whatever it is, I'm begging you. I am pleading with you online and on the campus. I'm pleading with you. Teenagers, I'm pleading with you. Children, I'm pleading with you. Those children in Michigan didn't know that it was going to be their last day. Come on here. You didn't, they didn't know that somebody crazy was going to come into school and shoot the school of teenagers. I'm begging you. Come on, old folk. I'm begging you, people that are living away. I'm begging. I'm pleading with you. I'm crying. You got to accept Jesus. And if you don't accept Jesus, you will go to hell. And hell is nothing to play with. It is not a place where you want to have a little bit of fire. The Bible says you're going to be burned all night long. Who wants to live like that? Where the counterpart is that you can live in mansions. You can walk on gold streets. You can live in peace with God. I want the, I want the latter part of that. Don't give me hell. Give me heaven. And how do I get to heaven? It's the Lord Jesus. And when he says to Nicodemus, you were raised in the good schools. You were raised around church. But you lack one thing. You lack the Christian experience that is bathed in the Holy Ghost. You need Spirit of God because the Holy Ghost is going to keep you. The old church said he is a keeper. He'll keep me in perfect peace if I keep my mind straight on him. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you born again? And if they're born again, say, then we got some work to do. Because there's a world out there that ain't born again. I got some cousins that need the gospel. I got some uncles that need I got an auntie who needs the gospel. And God brought me to this place to get my marching orders. And I don't know who I'm preaching to. But look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. And say, neighbor, who do you know that needs to be born again? Who do you need to know that needs the gospel? Because the gospel ain't just for you. But the gospel is for the world. Because the Bible says, the Bible says, for God so loved 
but I want you to get somebody on your mind that you know needs to hear the gospel and you say Lord give me the give me the courage give me the tenacity give me the words to say to share the gospel with my unsaved family members give me the courage to share the gospel with an unsaved co-worker give me the courage that I need to share the gospel come on New Bethel let's be about our father's business there's a world that's dying and going to hell there's a world that doesn't know Jesus but I'm looking at some folk who know Jesus in the pardon of your sin you know
an outpour of his spirit. Thank you, Lord. Everybody in the sanctuary, lift your hands. If that is you today, just come on to the altar. Put your mask on. There are ministers up here who have masks. So if, so if that, I don't want anything to hinder you on today. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for the baptism of your spirit today, God. Give us a finite understanding of this feeling, God. All over the sanctuary, those of you who understand this, go ahead and just begin to pray in the spirit. We can't be afraid of God's giftings for his body. We can't be afraid of what God has given to the body in order for spiritual growth and to move and operate in spiritual things. Hallelujah, God, we receive it on today. We thank you for the whole word. We thank you for the entire manifestation of your spirit. And as we labor, as we labor today, waiting, God, as we labor, God, as you give confidence to your people, God, fill us up. Fill us up, God. Fill us up, God. Your word says that. There is an evidence of this outpouring. There is an evidence in our belly. The Bible says that out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Can everybody in the sanctuary put your hands where your, your belly is? God, we honor you today, God. We thank you for making us spiritual vessels, God, that can overcome tragedy, can overcome trauma, can overcome disease, can overcome anything that is not from you because we know that all things that are good are from you. And so we thank you right now for this outpour. Right now, if that's you, if you are wanting to get saved and born again today, come on to the altar. Born again. What that means is that you are wanting Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, come to the altar. This is a time that you can come if you want to rededicate your life to Christ. Now is a good time. Come on to the altar. If you are looking for a church home and want to join church, this church, as a member, come to the altar. Hallelujah. Look to your left or right. Let them know that you will go with them. Let them know that you will be with them, that you will support them in this decision. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. If you are wanting to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that means you are saved, you have been baptized in water, but you want the baptism of the Holy Spirit, come to the altar. Hallelujah.
We are in awe of you on today, God. We thank you for those who have received you on today, God. Those who may see this online, who are just looking for an opportunity to be taught what it means to be Christ-like, what it means to be a Christian. We pray for people who are sick and shut in right now, God, who may be struggling, God, who may be struggling on whether to come back to church, whether to go to church, what they what they want to believe, God. We are interceding for them right now. Yes, Lord. God, we thank you, God, just for people who are committed to the work, God. We thank you, and God, strengthen them. Build them up, oh God. Give them energy, God, so that they may finish the work, God. We thank you for spiritual assignment, God. Give clarity to every believer in this place. God, we thank you for leaders, God. Give them clarity on their mission. God, on their purpose for the kingdom. We lift up the ministers of this house. We lift up the deaconess in this house. We lift up the deacons in this house. We lift up the health care units in this house. The youth workers in this house. The mothers in this house. The worshipers in this house. The media ministry in this house, God. Bring clarity, God. Refocus and realign the divine assignment. We thank you that we are sent and not went. We thank you that we are sent and not went. That this community will be changed, oh God. That we understand our assignment. And God, that we will do it with confidence. And in the name of Jesus that we declare victory on today. Amen. Will you agree with me, worshipers? Will you agree with your Savior, God? We do not want to lose. We do not want
amen, to those in school. So we just thank God for what's happening in New Bethel. Amen. This is a great church to be a part of. Amen. Tell somebody, say, neighbor, you go to a good church. Yeah, if they don't believe it, say you go to a God church. Come on. Yeah, you go to a God church. We're doing some great work in the community. Amen. As you're sowing today, here's what I want you to do. I want you to put your mind on the Lord. Uh, again, our efforts for our sanctuary, completely debt-free, paid in full. Uh, we start that project tomorrow. Amen. All the men in the house, women, if you want to work, please see uh, Deacon Jackson from Amos. Amen. They'll get you more information. Amen. We want you to sow today. Amen. You, uh, also, too, there was one correction. Um, December 18th is the church conference. December 18th is the church conference. We have announced that. Amen. Everybody should be aware of that at 10 a.m. Amen. Come out to be a part of it. As you're sowing today, I want you to believe God for more than enough. This is not a bill. This is not payment time. Y'all are paying God. No. You are sowing. And as long as the earth remains, there'll be a seed time and there'll be a harvest time. And we thank God for seed time right now. As, you're, as I'm praying over your seeds, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you give us seed to sow and you multiply the seed sown. And you give us bread for our food. Thank you that every need is met in this ministry and every need is met in the households of the people that are connected to this ministry. Thank you and I speak in advance and declare that our education wing is paid in full, completely debt free. That it is fully functional, fully operational, fully furnished. Thank you that every need is met in this church from financial bills to medical bills. I thank you that God, you're causing all grace to abound towards us. And we have all sufficiency and we want nothing. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and we believe. All of God's people said amen. amen. And we're in the hands of our ushers. out to you. If you don't have a church and you want to make this your church home, we can receive you online. But I want to pray with you that this week, you be a week of purpose. That you understand that everything that God is doing in the life of this church is because of you. So if you want to help us this week, amen, get involved. Amen. The men will be here Monday uh, working from 9 a.m. until if you want to get involved. But most of all, lock in with the church because there's great work being done. Let me pray with you before I let you go. Father, in Jesus' name, to our online audience, I pray for them. I speak a blessing over their life. I pray that God will not say that they would accept you today. And that, Father, you would do, begin to do a work in them by the Holy Ghost. Father, we rebuke and bind every spirit that's coming against them. But, God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would cover them in your blood. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Pastor loves you. Join us Wednesday. We'll be virtual. We will not be online. We want to be in person. We'll be virtual on Wednesday for Bible study. Join us. We can't wait to see you. Have a great week. Be blessed.